Acts 3, verses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Now I'm going to stop right there and say this. We have it that Jesus healed. We spent nearly 20 minutes reading about the healings of Jesus. Now we're leading, going to the acts of the Holy Ghost that he moved and operated through the apostles. Then he went back. We're going to go back to the Old Testament and find where he healed in the Old Covenant. My God, my God, my God. If he healed in the Old Covenant and healed when Jesus was here and healed when the apostles here and this is a better covenant established on better promises, my God, why doesn't he heal now just like he did back there when they weren't even born again? Why is he going to shortchange me? It makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. Makes no sense for preachers to stand in their pulpits and tell me the day of miracles is gone. This is the best time to live. If he healed and did miracles in the old covenant, then he's going to be doing it now. Glory be unto God. So think like God. Well, do better than that. Just reason this out. Hallelujah. Woo! Yep, Jesus. Now, Acts 3, 1 through 7 again. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asking an alms. And Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Verse 16, And his name, speaking of Jesus, And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Glory to God. We don't have Jesus here in the flesh, but we still got his name. Acts 4, verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. In other words, he got healed after Jesus was crucified by using Jesus' name. Verse 22. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was showed. Verse 29 and 30. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Thanks be unto God, the last three nights we've been looking at the name. The name's been handed to us to use, and things happen when you use the name in faith. Chapter 5 of Acts, verse 16. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. Acts 8, verse 7. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, or who were paralyzed, and that were lame, were healed. Acts 9, verse 34. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole, arise and make up thy bed, and he arose immediately. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Acts 14, verse 8 and 9 and 10, and there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and he leaped and walked i got to go back to acts 10 because it said jesus did these miracles for god was with him well paul the writer of hebrews says this that the lord will never leave me nor forsake me that means god is with me Oh, Lord, we just pray that you be here today. We just pray that you go with us after the service. Folks, you don't have to pray it. He's going with you. He said he'd never leave us or forsake us. 
I can close this service down and he's going. He's going with you to your house and he's going with me to my house. It's just not knowing the Bible that may, well, Lord, we pray that you go with us as we depart tonight. He's going. That's the good news. When you put your little fuzzy hair on the bed tonight and lay your little fuzzy head on the pillow, know this, he's there too. <laughs> well, one thing about it, if I come here every night, you, you step on my toes. Because I prayed that. Oh, good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said good. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Acts 28, verse 8 and 9. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. Verse 27, For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted, and I should heal them. God's plan is our ears are cleaned out and we hear what he's saying tonight. That our eyes have the blinders so that we see what he's saying so he can heal us. Glory to God. Romans 8 verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken or make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Where does the spirit live? In you. That means he's going home with you tonight. Verse 31, 32. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? That means healing. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, 8, 9, and 10. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. These are gifts from the Spirit. These are not gifts that you learn in the local four-year college institution. These are not man thought up gifts these come from God. These are not doctors healing you. These are come from the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost heals. And the Holy Ghost performs miracles. Blessed be the name of God. Thank God for doctors, but they don't take the place of God. Never have, never will. I was in the hospital room with one that was sick one time and they had a book about healing on the edge of the bed and the doctor came in and picked up the book chucked it back on the bed and said it's hocus pocus and about three or four months later he didn't have a job it's not hocus pocus it's holy ghostus <laughs> amen <laughs> praise the lord second corinthians 1 verse 20 for all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 10. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And what was under the curse of the law in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter? Every disease that was named in the law and every one that wasn't, the Bible says. Every single disease that the world will ever come up with Jesus has redeemed us from it. 